Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has given us unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. Have you ever done a building project with one of your kids? Maybe a birdhouse or a table? You made the plans, gathered the supplies, talked about how it was going to go together. It's fun and exciting, and in the end, you usually have something to be proud of, or at least you've made some great memories together. You might have even taught your child some good lessons or had some meaningful conversations along the way. That's how I imagine David and Solomon in Second Chronicles 28 and 29. David wanted to build God a temple, a house for people to come meet him. God said David had shed too much blood for him to build the temple, but his son Solomon could do it. I imagine David taking teenage Solomon up on Mount Moriah, scrolls stuffed under his arm, running to one end of the imaginary building, excitedly describing the columns, the marble, and the gold, showing him where the outer courts and inner courts would be. Then dropping the plans for the temple, he'd walk over to one end and say with awe and reverence, Here, this will be where the Holy of Holies will be. And the ark of the Lord will be right here. Then he'd spread out the scrolls and they'd pour over the plans together. Suddenly, David would stop and look at his son and say something like he said in 1 Chronicles 28, 9 and 10. My son, Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Just think, the Lord has chosen you to build a house for this sanctuary. Be strong and do it. And Solomon would have looked at him and said solemnly, Yes, Father, I will. Then that night, as David was praying, he would have prayed for his dear son, like he did in First Chronicles twenty nine nineteen. Lord, give my son Solomon a loyal heart to keep your commandments and your testimonies and your statutes, to do all these things, and to build the temple for which I have made provision. David was so excited to see his son Solomon doing something special for the Lord. He knew that God had a purpose for his son. And he did everything he could to make sure Solomon would succeed, too. He gathered material, drew up plans, and made agreements with Hiram, king of Tyre, to provide the lumber and skilled labor needed to do the job. And he trained Solomon, not just in the physical things, but in the spiritual things, too. It was just as important, no, really even more important, that Solomon have his heart right with the Lord than he succeed in building the temple. As parents, whether natural parents or spiritual parents, we long for our children to succeed. We instill in them an importance of knowing and serving the Lord of having a pure heart and a willing mind. Then we pray for them. We pray, Lord, give my son or daughter a loyal heart to keep your commandments, to please you in everything they do. You made them for a purpose. You have something special for them. Show them what that is, that they can join you in building your kingdom. Their building project will be different from mine. It's something that you call them to. Help them be faithful to you and be successful where you have called them to build. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. We'd love to hear the treasures God has given you through his word. You can listen to other episodes at our website, which you can find in the description below. Thanks for listening, and remember... Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.